hope you can see it. Um, is it visible? Okay, let me know if it's not. Um, Let's go yeah. over here. Um, I um, prepared two presentations um, today. Um, so the first one is about data science at OLX. Um, OLX is the company where I work. Um, and uh, I just want to tell you what we do, um, um, how we use data science, um, um, and a bit uh, about how it is, uh, how we work there. Um, so that's the plan. Um, um, so why, uh, so the, the first question you might have is, uh, um, hey, are you hiring juniors? I unfortunately have to tell you that at the moment we do not, um, but um, so why, why I am telling you this? Um, I think it still can be useful for you to know how it is, uh, uh, how data science is applied. Um, uh, companies uh, in industry settings, um, how data scientists collaborate with uh, the rest uh, of the company, with uh, inside uh, the team, with the rest of with other teams, and how a career progression may, may look like uh, for a data scientist. So first, uh, I'll start with uh, what uh, uh, OLX is. So many people in Germany do not know OLX. Um, Olix is a um, um, brand for uh, online classifieds. Um, so this is uh, places um, where people, so for example, we have um, uh, presence in India. So this is uh, the place where people go to, to sell things they don't need and buy things they need. So this is uh, a platform for, for selling things. Um, so we have uh, presence in India. Uh, in Poland, in Ukraine, these are our three uh, biggest um, websites, but there are also many others. Um, we have an office in Berlin, even though we don't have uh, market presence in Germany. Um, it's um, quite big, but not super big. So it's um, almost 300 people, um, quite a few teams, and uh, we have uh, the 14 data scientists, including one student in our office. Um, we're located on Alexanderplatz, so maybe you saw this building. So this is where we, uh, where our office is, and uh, this is where I sit on 14th floor. Um, so what do we do? How we use data science at Twilix? So there are quite a few areas. Um, where we use it, um, that's uh, uh, search to make uh, finding things easier, recommendation uh, um, to make it easier to discover things, um, then uh, trust and safety um, to uh, prevent people posting some abusive uh, content, then uh, seller experience to make uh, it easier to sell on the platform and monetization to earn more money. I'll just, um, quickly say how exactly we use data scientists, uh, science, uh, what kind of projects we, uh, we have for each of these areas. Uh, and then we'll uh, cover uh, one of these uh, areas. So for search, um, the idea is to, to make it easier for find things um, and then also make it personalized. Um, so if we know based on uh, user history, what these users tend to, to um, to like, we want to um, to push these items uh, in the in the ranking when the user is searching. Then also sometimes there are cases when um, uh, users uh, type something, but there are no result. There are no results. These are called null searches. We want to reduce uh, the amount of null searches and still show something, even the, if there is uh, nothing to show. Um, and we want to understand what the query is about, what the user wants to, to find, and then also correct spelling. And recommendations, uh, mm -hmm. this is um, pretty standard things like uh, um, people who, who like these items uh, also like these items. Um, so we have this in uh, production as well. Then trust and safety, this is the area where um, machine learning started at OLX. Um, this is about uh, looking at what people um, post on the platform 
uh, and then trying to uh, prevent, uh, to remove bad content. So this is uh, things like uh, not safe for work images, uh, things uh, that are forbidden to sell, uh, fraud, duplicate, uh, spam messages in chat, uh, offensive messages and things like this. Then there is uh, an area, um, uh, the posting flow, this is when people want to sell something. We, might, we want to make it simpler uh, for people to sell and um, also to make uh, listings more attractive. And then we do things like analyzing if the listing is good, if images in the listing are, are good enough, uh, like if it's maybe blurry uh, or uh, uh, unfocused or it's good enough. And then we tell the sellers, hey, there are some problems with your images, please do something about this. Um, and then deal prediction is understanding if uh, some items were sold but not removed from the platform. Uh, and then finally, monetization is uh, to actually uh, earn money is uh, mostly about ads we have on the platform uh, to, to make them less annoying and um, uh, actually uh, to, uh, to optimize uh, earnings from, um, from ads. So these are main areas and I covered them very briefly. Um, but I just would want to go to one of these areas. This is where I uh, worked. Uh, at Twilix uh, for uh, most of uh, my time here. Um, this is trust and safety. Uh, so imagine that somebody wants to uh, to sell something. They go to the platform and they, they want to sell um, a dog. Um, sometimes uh, users uh, get uh, too enthusiastic and post too many copies of the same ad then it spams the platform and it's a bad user experience. Um, sometimes people uh, post some things that are, uh, uh, that shouldn't be there, like explicit nudity um, or offensive, uh, uh, offensive pictures. We want to also detect that and remove that. Sometimes people want to sell illegal things like guns uh, or drugs or something like this. Um, and now um, there is a policy that, uh, we, if somebody wants to sell masks or sanitizers, um, we also want to uh, not allow this. So this is basically content moderation. Um, so with all these uh, problems, we want to, to see what people post and uh, remove some of this content. Now for that, we have a special um, content moderation system, um, which basically when uh, a user uh, creates an ad, um, we have a bunch of uh, like a special system with a bunch of models uh, that look at this ad and analyze using machine learning. And then um, these ads are either automatically accepted, then they go live on the platform, they are automatically rejected, they uh, do not go live, or in many cases when uh, machine learning is not certain, uh, it actually sends um, the, the listing to a moderation queue and then people, moderators, look at these listings and make the final decision uh, whether it should go live or not. And this automatic modera moderation system contains uh, many components, uh, each component for each use case, like a component for duplicate detection, component for detecting forbidden items, component for detecting not safe for work images, and many other models. And uh, I will not go into details, uh, uh, but this is our duplicate detection uh, uh, system so you see it's quite a complex system so first we uh, look at that we try to index it to keep it in our database um, then we actually use machine learning for detecting duplicates um, to see uh, to try to match uh, a new listing with existing ones um, then we also in cases when we are not certain about listing we send it to moderators and uh, what is important uh, all the decisions that moderators make we save them and uh, we can use them to, to build better models. Um, you can learn more about this duplication uh, detection system because this is what uh, I personally was involved uh, in. So there are a few links and then also we have two posts on our blog about this. Um, yes, yeah, so feel free to, to check it. Um, 
the way uh, with, with like the building such systems like uh, this one, the one I just showed, is quite a complex task. So it involves the it involves a lot of people to make it possible. So it's clear that uh, a data data scientist uh, who just graduated from a bootcamp will not be able to to make such a system alone. So it's a lot of people. Sometimes it's one team, sometimes it's uh, uh, many teams. So for example, uh, for this content moderation system, it's actually three teams who, who are working on this project. So there are many roles, uh, uh, many people who are involved in, uh, in this project. So these are product managers. Um, product manager is somebody who, uh, who makes sure that the things uh, a, a team are, the team is doing, they are actually needed. Then engineering manager is manager of engineers. Then we have uh, many engineers, many different kinds of engineers, like backend engineers, the data engineers, machine learning engineers. Um, and then there are analysts and data scientists. And uh, all work together in one team to achieve the same goal. And then this is um, called, called uh, so-called matrix structure. This is how we uh, work at Elix, and this is how many other companies work. So this is quite an interesting structure when in one team there are many different people and they have different uh, managers, but still all of them work together um, to achieve the same goal. Um, so for example, in case of data scientists, they have their own manager, engineers, they have their own manager and um, analysts have their own managers. So this uh, grouping in teams is um, called uh, feature teams. So this is uh, a team uh, with experts in different areas. So we have product managers, we have uh, backend engineers, uh, data engineers, also product analysts and data scientists. Um, all um, have some expertise in some area and all work on the same, uh, uh, on the same product, on the same problem. Um, and they all, what is important, they all have the same goal. Um, so if uh, they need to do something, they all work together to, uh, on achieving this. So for this, we use uh, a thing called OKRs, um, Objective and Key, key Results. Um, so this is a really great tool for, um, for uh, goal setting. Um, for example, no objective can be catch more fraudsters, and then there are some key results that model A should be improved from 30% to 60%, and then we have another model that should be tested in five markets, for example. And then all these people, um, uh, like or entire team works on achieving this. So it's not just data scientists sitting there trying to put models, it's entire team of, uh, uh, six, seven, eight people trying to to achieve this together. Um, because of course, things like uh, uh, this uh, content moderation system, they are quite difficult uh, and a lot of engineering support is needed to actually um, to keep it running. Um, so with that, what are actually expectations from a data scientist? Uh, so what is expected from uh, a data scientist? Um, um, Typical uh, project, uh, data science project, involves many steps. So first, uh, product definition is uh, what is the problem we are solving, then data collection, like what kind of data we have to, to solve this problem. Uh, data processing is uh, something that, um, like how we can transform the data in such a form that we can use machine learning for that. Then we evaluate the model. And then the model goes to production, and then finally, uh, end customers see the, the, the effect of the model. Uh, we can try to map all the roles to, to different stages um, of uh, a data science project. And then we see that um, for us, uh, for the data scientists are involved in uh, data processing, modeling, evaluation, and to some extent production. But then there are other roles like so machine learning engineers, software engineers, and site availability engineers who are more concentrated on production and uh, making sure the models um, uh, are reliably serving end customers. And also have uh, when we have data processing, that's uh, data engineers um, who 
to make sure that uh, data pipelines uh, are reliable. And then the data scientist uh, sits somewhere here. So the, the main focus is modeling, evaluation, and then a bit of production. Um, so this is um, from what I saw from the curriculum at Spice. This is, uh, uh, you got it covered. So this is like Python, um, things like scikit-learn, and then a bit of production. This is like just taking your model, putting into um, to, uh, uh, a web, uh, like as a web service and putting into Docker. Um, but uh, at some point, data scientist, a data scientist might do a bit more. And then, uh, for example, go a bit uh, on the right to do more production. And then um, uh, in this case, it's not just putting a model in Docker, but also being involved more in, into infrastructure, uh, like Terraform, Kubernetes, AWS, all these things. This is not expected from uh, juniors, but from um, people who are more senior, like middle and senior uh, data scientists, uh, they tend to involve into these things more and more. Then also we can go a bit to, on the left to do more data processing. And then it's again AWS and things like uh, Airflow for scheduling jobs, uh, writing a lot of SQL queries um, in AWS Athena or Spark or some other thing. Um, then also uh, a data scientist should be involved in uh, uh, in the, at the initial steps of the process. Uh, like when we define what the product, uh, what, are the, what is the problem we're trying to solve uh, and then uh, to, to do it better, a data scientist should learn more from product managers. Um, and uh, yeah, so as I said, uh, from juniors, we don't expect many things uh, to do, like because this is a lot of things to cover, um, but rather be focused on small areas. But as uh, career progresses, um, data scientists tend to cover more things. And this is how our career uh, progression looks like. So it's pretty standard junior, middle, and senior, and then we have um, branching into expert track and managerial track. Um, I'll quickly cover what, uh, what are the expectations on three uh, different levels, like junior, middle, and senior. Uh, for a junior, junior should be able to, to do a task independently, uh, mostly independently, so sometimes it's uh, okay to have supervision, uh, but then in the um, for example, in cases of modeling or putting model to Docker, um, the expectations that uh, juniors uh, do this independently and then if there is a uh, need, then somebody can just help. Then from middle data scientists, middle level data scientists, uh, the, in the level of independence uh, grows and then they tend to take more active parts in uh, uh, task planning, breakdown, task breakdown, uh, prioritization, deciding what to do, uh, what is important to do next. And then for senior level, uh, they work uh, completely independently on complex tasks uh, and then uh, they drive projects, uh, meaning that they uh, take active parts in uh, formulating the problem, breaking it down and then uh, assigning it, uh, then asking juniors and middle uh, level data scientists to actually do this. Then um, expectations that uh, senior uh, data scientists communicate a lot more uh, with stakeholders, try to collect requirements from them, and then they uh, help less senior people by mentoring them. Um, and then finally, to when we see like as career progresses, we periodically collect feedback from um, from peers, uh, peer review, this is so-called 360 degree feedback, which happens every six months. And then uh, we ask all the people around, uh, like uh, anyone who, who works with a person to, to submit some feedback. Um, so there are things like free form feedback, like things that uh, the person should continue doing, start doing, stop doing. And then there is uh, a more structured component it's like, is this person following best engineering practice? Uh, like, uh, is this person finding areas where machine learning can bring value to customers and things like this? There are 
15 or 16 uh, dimensions like this. Uh, and then if we see that uh, on all these dimensions, uh, the, the, uh, uh, it's quite good, then um, a data scientist can be promoted to the next level. Um, so I think I covered the first presentation. So I just want to mention that um, a lot of things I covered here and they, um, not just my work, it's effort of, of many people, especially these uh, uh, responsibilities uh, like where, uh, who should do what, the career paths, the performance evaluation, and many people were involved into to making this, um, um, uh, this, so the things I'm talking about here. So I want to mention that. And if you want to, to learn more about the um, we have a tech blog where you can read articles about uh, the things we're doing, um, check Twitter also, and um, uh, check our jobs. As I said, we unfortunately right now don't have junior positions. And uh, at the time we, uh, to be honest, don't have any positions, um, but uh, I hope it will change soon. And then uh, when it does, go there and check. And then if you have some questions for me, then you can also contact me personally. And um, uh, if you have some questions about OLX, um, I'm happy to answer, please, uh, please ask. Uh, 